you've heard of Florida Man, but you've never encountered his even wilder cousin. Get ready to meet Texas Man, who has all of Florida Man's crazy, but in a much bigger hat. And these are some of Texas Man's most notorious exploits and dumbest arrests. The people of Smith County were lining up to do a civic duty few were excited about, jury duty. But one man apparently wanted to take the edge off his little chore a bit more than the rest. Instead of bringing a book or trying to keep up on work while in the waiting room, he loaded up on something else before arriving. Booze. Taylor Huckabee showed up at the courthouse and it was clear to everyone he was drunk. Slurring his words and stumbling around, he was even carrying a cup of beer when the authorities approached him. He was charged with public intoxication and spent his day at the courthouse in a cell. But he didn't have the worst choice of where to get drunk. Suzette Mir Gordon became a notorious Texas woman when she showed up to Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport in 2017. The 52-year-old drank several glasses of wine when she was waiting for her flight and was already a little drunk when she stumbled on board. But she wasn't done. As soon as the flight was in the air, she demanded another alcoholic beverage. When the flight attendant refused the drunk woman's order, Gordon slapped her, started yelling that she was an important person, and ran out of her seat to bang on the cockpit door to demand to speak to the pilot. The whole flight was diverted back to Dallas and Gordon was soon asking to speak to the manager of the local jail. This next Texas woman was driven by something other than alcohol. In the city of Leander, Texas, police weren't expecting many calls in the middle of the night, but then they got a frenzied call from a private home. Someone had broken in. What they found was bizarre. It wasn't a standard burglar, but an older woman who had broken in and begun beating a boy with a stick. Sarah Arnada snuck into the home, found the boy sleeping on the couch, and began whacking him while yelling voodoo curses. She apparently asked him who else was in the house, but police weren't able to get much more out of the confused woman. The boy was uninjured, and nothing was taken from the house, so whatever Miss Arnada was after, it was going to remain a mystery. Age is no barrier for Texas men and women. No one likes rude drivers, and it's even worse when the jerks curse you out after cutting you off. And 76-year-old Jay Brumbaugh had had enough. When a couple passed him on the road and made an obscene gesture out the window, he gave chase and decided to escalate it with a handgun he had in the car. The younger drivers had been tired of Brumbaugh's slow driving, but they weren't expecting him to shoot at their car after they flipped him the bird. The drivers were uninjured and eventually police tracked down Brumbaugh and charged him with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The other inmates should probably steer clear of him. It takes some guts to be a criminal, but it doesn't take smarts. Chiriaco Balmacita and his criminal friend had a simple plan. They would break into a Houston area home and rob it. But they weren't planning to be confronted by an armed homeowner who fended off the trio of robbers and sent them running. But at least they got away scot-free, right? Not exactly. In his panic, Chiriaco left his backpack behind and with it a bunch of identifying documents. The resident, who is now one of the few robbery victims to end the day with more belongings, sent a picture of Bamasita's school ID to the police. The police tracked him down and gave him an unwanted birthday present, burglary charges. Of course, being smart and educated is no guarantee of good sense. It was a pretty standard case. An angry man had assaulted a family member with a lacrosse stick and then went on to do some more costly revenge, causing $10,000 of damage to a Porsche. The police quickly arrested him and charged him with assault and destruction of property. But what shocked people was the culprit's identity. It was David Park Mason, a chief of thoracic surgery and one of the best lung transplant surgeons in the country. What caused a renowned and educated doctor to suddenly start acting like a petty criminal? No one knows, but his patients are likely to breathe a sigh of relief that he didn't lose his temper mid-surgery. Temper is a common downfall of Texas man, but few had the bad judgment of this next criminal. John L. Eels had a lifelong hatred for cops, and it hadn't dissipated by the time he was 70 years old. And he apparently thought that it meant he didn't have to obey any laws, or at least the ones about drunk driving. He was already drunk when he was behind the wheel in 2017 when he saw an officer directing traffic in Fort Bend. Instead of swerving out of the way, he deliberately swerved toward the officer, made an obscene gesture, and clipped Detective Cavillo with his vehicle. Cavillo was only lightly injured and was able to give chase and quickly arrested Eels. Shocking everyone, Eels was not normally a law-abiding citizen. It was at least his third DWI. We all hate this next annoyance, but this next Texas man took it a bit too far. No solicitors. You put that sign outside your house, but does it stop the window replacement guys, the Bible salesmen, or the Girl Scouts? Well, maybe the Girl Scouts are okay, but it's enough to make a sensible person turn out the lights and pretend they're not home. But Radu Shivu was not a sensible person. When a roofing salesman ignored the sign and knocked on the door, Shivu opened up and proceeded to shoot the salesman with a handgun. 
Chivu insisted he was justified because the salesman was warned by the sign, but the police disagreed. The salesman was taken to the hospital, and Chivu was charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and taken to jail where no salesman will bother him. This next criminal may not have thought this plan through. When police got a call from Alan Dwayne Thomas, they were on high alert. The Weatherford man claimed to have shot two people and stated that others were in his home. But when police got to the house, there was no sign of any home invaders alive or dead. There was only Thomas armed and lurking in his home. Police believed it was an attempt to ambush police officers for unknown reasons, but if that was Thomas's goal, he wasn't very good at it. The confused criminal kept yelling at the officers to come inside and get him. Ultimately, they were able to get the drop on him, and the would-be police hunter was arrested without ever firing a shot. This Texas man had a slightly inflamed opinion of himself. Omar Alanis had a position of responsibility. He was a high school history teacher, but despite only working in his current position for a few months, he decided he was worth more. A lot more, in fact. He wanted something he described as the master teacher salary. He proceeded to send email demands to his principal and school administrators that included threats that if they didn't want to burn alive, they would give it to him. He even seemed to think it would be the Dallas PD that killed his co-workers. He wasn't smart about it. He sent the emails from his school email and went on the run after the emails became public. After a week, the terrible teacher came out of hiding and was arrested for terroristic threats. This next man made a boast he couldn't back up. Denton, Texas residents were startled when a man was seen wandering around the town, confused and his face smeared with dark material. When people tried to confront him and find out if he was okay, he would only say one thing, I am the law. To no one's surprise, he wasn't actually the law, and the police showed up soon enough. They arrested the man, identified as Joseph Agostini, for public intoxication and found drug-related items on his body. The whole time, he claimed to be a member of the cops and even told the cops that they should draw their guns or it wouldn't be a fair fight. Let's hope he didn't tell anyone at the jail he was the law. Sometimes, to stop a Texas woman, it takes another Texas woman. A San Antonio 7-Eleven clerk was having a bad day. She was dealing with a hostile customer, and the rude woman would not go away. She kept approaching the counter and heckling the worker and simply refused to leave when ordered. And the clerk had had enough. She came out from behind the counter and proceeded to get into a fight in the middle of the store. As a local social media hound filmed the encounter and egged them on, the clerk eventually put the troublemaker in a headlock before the woman wriggled free and left the store in a hurry. The clerk called the police to report the customer and the footage went viral. No one knows if the culprit was ever caught for trespassing, but it's likely she didn't try that behavior at another store next time. This next crook had an unusual cover story. It was 2019 and the 2020 presidential election was ramping up. One of the hopefuls was fresh-faced Texas Congressman Beto O'Rourke, who was in the race for about 15 minutes. But James Bradford Gibbon II saw an opportunity. The criminal posed as an O'Rourke campaign worker when a neighbor saw him casing a house and then proceeded to break into the house. The quarry he wound up stealing? A popsicle. That turned out to be a very costly, frosty treat, as he was charged with felony burglary. The campaign confirmed Gibbon never worked for them, and this is probably not an endorsement Beto O'Rourke will be advertising in his next race. Texas car chases are notorious, but this one had an unexpected twist. When police confronted 45-year-old Alan Bade outside the convenience store and tried to arrest him, it wasn't shocking when the wanted man jumped on his vehicle and tried to get away. But in this case, the vehicle was a John Deere tractor. Bade had been driving his tractor all around town, even rear-ending another car, and when the police were after him, he didn't stop, not even when an officer tried to jump on the tractor and grab him. The officer fell off and injured his shoulder, and Bade's slow-motion chase continued until officers cornered him in a field. Bade was charged with aggravated assault of a peace officer and will assume someone else will have to plow his fields. They say never miss an opportunity to promote yourself, but this guy took that a little far. The police have been searching for Taryn Larry Bowie for a while. The San Antonio man was wanted for the shooting of two teenagers in a car wash, and when the police finally got to him, they perp-walked him in front of news cameras. This is usually a humiliation, but Bowie saw an opportunity. As he walked by the cameras, he yelled out his YouTube and SoundCloud accounts. A big promotion, but the problem is he probably won't be around to update them for a while. And the reason for the tech-savvy shooter's crime? A dispute with the teenagers over the sale of an Xbox. 2020 changed everything, but it didn't give everyone more common sense. As the pandemic settled in, schools everywhere shifted to virtual learning, with most classes being conducted live on Zoom. That led to a high learning curve and for an Edison High School teacher some unexpected harassment. She was teaching an art class when one of her students decided to start making some lewd gestures at the screen. He even took his shirt off and asked her harassing questions. A couple of other boys decided to jump in, and then the entire class devolved into a group of teenagers harassing their teacher. 
She reported it to the school district, and both the administration and local authorities were looking into the case of the lewd schoolboys. But sometimes it's the teachers who show some bad judgment. Rose Rodriguez Rabin was a former English teacher at the University of Texas at San Antonio, but she had a highly illegal second job. She was charged by federal authorities with being part of a complex digital network selling drugs, led by organizer Varun Prasad. There was just one problem with the scheme, the drugs weren't even real. Most of them were claimed to be Adderall and Xanax, prescription pills designed to help people focus. In fact, they were mostly fake pills laced with harder drugs that could have been dangerous. The bad teacher was facing serious federal drug charges, and the students of her former college were a little bit safer. Texas men commit a lot of crimes, but sometimes the Texas men fight back. Hot Joy was one of the most popular restaurants in San Antonio, serving a popular Asian fusion menu. It was also famous for its colorful owner, Chad Carey, who was notorious for his brash social media personality. So when a burglar broke into the restaurant after hours and was caught on camera, Carey didn't disappoint. He wanted the guy caught and made some unique threats. He challenged his fans to find the hapless criminal and vowed to cover him in crab fat caramel and beat him with frozen chicken wings. It's not clear if the burglar was ever caught, but maybe he should turn himself in before Carey and his friends find him. We've all had a snack attack, but few take it this far. San Antonio loves its Whataburger, and the popular chain can have long lines at the drive-in. But Andrea Santarelli wasn't willing to wait, and the hangry young driver decided she should get to cut the line. As a hapless woman was waiting for her turn, she noticed Santarelli trying to swerve around the rest of the line, and then collided directly with the woman's car. This would have been a ticket and some points on her insurance, except that Santarelli then got angry and accused the stationary victim's car of hitting her. She got out of her car and started harassing the woman and damaging her car. Santarelli fled before the police got there, but was tracked down and arrested. She did over $2,000 in damage to the vehicle, a very costly burger run. You've heard of Grand Theft Auto, but how about Grand Theft Donkey? Alina Berlanga was a respected woman, serving on the Floresville, Texas school board. She was also an animal lover, and when she heard an animal in distress, she had to interfere. It didn't matter that the animal was a donkey or that it was in labor. She and her two accomplices heard the donkey, broke off a lock on a gate to get to it, drove the purloined donkey to a nearby vet. Sadly, the donkey's foal died when being born, and the donkey's angry owner wanted Berlanga charged with stealing his valuable animal. Berlanga was charged with misdemeanors, but defended her actions by saying she was rescuing an animal in need. She loved animals, but this next Texas woman didn't respect anything. It was a crowded day in traffic near the Houston National Veterans Cemetery, as everyone was coming to watch a ceremonial flyover to commemorate VE Day. One woman was determined not to miss the event, but completely missed the point of the day in the process. When she was tired of waiting in traffic, she pulled to the side of the road and started driving on the grass instead, cutting through the cemetery and running over multiple gravestones in the process. Onlookers were horrified and filmed her, with many likely taking down her license plate. It's not clear if she was arrested, but she might have bigger problems if she's a believer in disturbed spirits. This next guy would not admit he dealt it, no matter who smelt it. Christopher Ragsdale was having a quiet night at home with his girlfriend, but there was one problem. He was particularly gassy. After he let out a particularly ripe one, his girlfriend couldn't take it anymore and commented that his fart smelled horrible. So he reacted in a completely proportional way, headbutting her and trying to drag her outside. The boorish beefer had the police called on him and they charged him with domestic violence. He should probably stay away from the beans when it's time for dinner in jail. This next con was anything but a master of stealth. Carmelo de Leon was driving along when he ran a red light, and he was quickly stopped by a police officer. It would have been a standard moving violation ticket, but de Leon stunk of marijuana, and the officer asked him if he had any in the car. De Leon had a sudden burst of honesty, maybe spurred on by the weed, and admitted it. He hadn't exactly hidden it in a smart place. There was over a hundred grams stuffed inside a bag of Cheetos. That's one way to combine weed and the ensuing munchies, but it's not exactly helpful if you're trying to keep your drugs hidden. This next Texas criminal is not a candidate for Mother of the Year. It was night at the Sonic drive-in, and an employee was bringing a bag of food to Monica Michelle Logan. But when the car hop delivered the food, Logan suddenly pulled out a gun. She demanded the attendant hand over all the money she had in her apron or she would shoot. And after getting the cash, Logan drove off. But the attendant noticed something disturbing. There were two sleeping babies in the back of the getaway car. When Logan was eventually tracked down, she admitted to robbing the drive-in with two kids under two in the back seat, and police tacked on two charges of endangering a child to the robbery charges. One Texas man didn't have great coping techniques. 
Bexar County firefighters were busy in early 2020 when a series of mysterious fires broke out in local homes. The first house was abandoned and there was evidence of arson, but the second home had something disturbing in it. A 21-year-old man sitting inside the house as it burned. They dragged him outside and Marco Martinez admitted to setting the fires, including the one he almost died in. When he was found to be a gang member, Martinez gave the officers a bizarre reason for the arson. He said it helped to relieve his stress. This next woman had a less destructive way to relieve her stress. Visitors to the Wichita Falls Walmart came across something very unusual, an older woman zooming around the store's parking lot on the electronic shopping cart. But it wasn't the cart that was noticeable, it was that she was probably Texas's slowest drunk driver. As she drove, she took sips of wine from a liquid-filled Pringles can. Police were eventually called due to disruption and tracked the woman down at a local restaurant. While they didn't arrest her, probably because store scooters don't count as vehicles for DWI purposes, she was banned from the store and will have to get her next Pringles can elsewhere. This next Texas woman decided to one-up the Sonic robber. A man drove his silver Nissan Rogue on what he expected was a meetup with a woman, but what he found was anything but. The woman was there, and she had five kids with her, but this wasn't an unexpected babysitting job. She pulled out a gun and demanded he turn over the car, which he did. She then proceeded to load her kids up into the car and drive off, and was still at large at the last report. While it's no comfort to the man who was robbed, we hope she at least buckled the kids up before driving off. One Texas man didn't really think this whole thing through. Sean Taylor was having a great time drinking one night, maybe a little too much. As the night went on, the bar kept serving him more than he could afford and his tab kept growing. When he realized, he accused the bar of overcharging him and decided he would get the police involved. But he didn't just make the call to the authorities, he spent the entire evening spamming police lines and 911 with calls and texts. His messages got increasingly rude and angry as the night went on, and the constant flow of texts wound up jamming the system. He was eventually arrested for misusing the 911 service, and has hopefully dried out since then. This criminal took some famous inspiration. When Christopher Fuentes burst into a dry cleaning store and threatened the employees as he robbed them, he made sure he'd be memorable. The crook had painted his face with white paint, which led the employees telling the police he looked like the Joker. But once he wipes the paint off, he'd be much harder to find, right? Not exactly, because a month later Fuentes was spotted walking down the road wearing the same face paint. Police arrested him and charged him with two robberies. Apparently, the face paint wasn't a disguise, the guy liked dressing like the Joker. These criminal masterminds got caught in the dumbest way possible. Concert tickets are valuable and some people will go to extremes to get them. One man found that out the hard way when he arranged to sell his tickets to a Jay-Z concert in Houston. Two women showed up, and Denitra Green grabbed the tickets out of his hand and sped off, and he was seriously injured when he tried to leap on the car. Police at first assumed they stole the tickets to resell them, but the women were apparently big Jay-Z fans. They were eventually apprehended when they were found watching the concert in the stolen seats and did not get to stick around for the encore. Few arrests are more embarrassing than this Texas man's case. Michael Logan Brown was enjoying his misspent youth when the 19-year-old and his friends decided to play around with a pair of handcuffs. Michael locked himself up and then realized no one had the handcuff keys. The friends tried to get the cuffs off through various means before deciding their best way was to go to the local police station and ask them to take them off with their key. This would have been smart if Michael didn't have an outstanding warrant for damaging a car windshield by jumping on it a few months earlier. If that wasn't bad enough, he probably should have cleaned his pockets out of the weed he was carrying before walking in. So Michael turned himself in without knowing it and traded his pair of handcuffs for a police-issued pair. This next Texas man lied to police on an explosive chase. Kelly Harris's luck had run out, and the truck thief knew police were on his tail. He had stolen a travel trailer, pulled a gun on the owner, and refused to stop for the police when they chased him down. He was in deep, and he was ready to go deeper. The thief started tossing portable propane tanks out of the truck while driving, maybe hoping to cause the officers to swerve away. There's just one problem, the propane is explosive, and a wrong move could have caused a massive disaster. Harris eventually left the car and ran away, and a canine officer finally tracked him down. He was charged with a host of crimes, but far less than he would have been if the tanks blew up. These next criminals were maybe a little too confident in their abilities. Two thieves were casing cars in Haltham City, hoping for a good target, a car that was on and being warmed up on a cold morning, allowing them to carjack it and get going in seconds. They spotted a promising car, and the person inside spotted them right back. It was Detective Tony Miller sitting in an unmarked car, and he waited for those goons to make their move. As soon as they tried to enter the car, Miller pulled his gun, and the two crooks ran. 
One led Miller on a car chase before crashing while the on-foot suspect escaped. For now, he's probably not the brightest. But at least he didn't pick as bad a target as this guy. It was a quiet morning at the Wilmer Police Department when suddenly a young man walked in. Keith and Kennard Manuel came up to the dispatcher, showed her a towel wrapped around his arm, and claimed he had a gun. He demanded all the station's money and was promptly arrested for the dumbest crime possible, trying to rob a police station filled with armed officers. When he was taken into custody, his defense was that he was joking and he does things like this all the time. Not surprisingly, police were laughing and the teenager was charged with robbery. But not armed robbery, he never had a gun, just a lot of stupidity. For more on the original legends, check out the most crazy Florida Man stories, and then watch dumb prison escape attempts for what these guys do after the arrest.